hey what's up guys and welcome back to anime king and today i'm going to be giving you part two of what if naruto was a legendary neglected uzumaki remember to get this one to 100 like as usual share this to all of your friends in social media platform and also guys i post a brand new series yesterday over an anime king three what if naruto had the ultimate nature bloodline so go ahead and check out that and enjoy guys and remember if you're new to go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the anime king family and thank you for all of your help and support and yeah without further ado what do you say begin this new episode and just as a reminder yes i have three channels anime king anime king 2 and making 3 which i post what if every single day for you guys enjoyment so yeah without further ado let's get straight into it So, the last time we left off, Naruto Uzumaki was basically seen as a prince of Kanuha, son of the four Takagi, son of the red hot Habanero, Kushina Uzumaki, and son of the Yellow Flash. As Naruto was heir to the Uzumaki clan, a few members had lived in Kanuha, until a tragic day when his sister was born, Karin, and the fox had gotten free. Naruto wasn't so sure about the specifics. Or where the fox ended up but he heard that some of it chakra was inside his sister but it had been real sealed inside his mother though that is what he heard as things went on Naruto started to get neglected as he realized that people only loved him because of the four Takagi's name as Naruto was constantly being trained in Fuinjutsu art no other training at all no taijutsu no ninjutsu no genjutsu just Fuinjutsu as he was a soon to be leader of the Uzumaki clan. As Naruto didn't like it one bit, his mother, even though tired he gave her a pass on that, his father didn't come home. As it has been months since he spoke to his father properly, but his father had time to bring Karin and show her to the village and Naruto was not basically invited because he had a day off and they let him sleep without even calling him to take the family portrait. He felt alone. Donzo found Naruto as he tried to twist Naruto's mind over to him. But Donzo then soon realized that Naruto was not any idiot. Nothing he say or did was getting through to Naruto. As Naruto also played a trick on him and said hey dad. Making Donzo jump in fright. As he thought that Minato was behind him. Naruto did have a caretaker though Izumi. A girl who was a couple years older than him. As she was there with him. As he asked if the both of them could be friends after all. He had no friends. His parents were his only friends. As Naruto decided to join the academy, in doing so, the moment he arrived there his name was vastly overestimated and he didn't like that one bit. He was a couple of months late to class and there was a boy there, Itachi Uchiha who saw Naruto. As Itachi saw that Naruto simply went along with everything just to play the crowd until the time came when it was sparring time. As the teacher called him to face off against Itachi. After all, he was the fourth Takagi's son, so he must have learned something from his father. But everyone was shocked when the fight over in seconds, Itachi had Naruto on the ground within seconds. Naruto has never received any type of Taijutsu training before, so he did not stand a chance against Itachi. As the other class members started to cheer on Itachi, and they couldn't even believe that Naruto was actually the son of the fourth Takagi. Was that a possibility or was it a lie? As Naruto felt humiliated, he was angry. He swore to himself right there and then, he would get stronger. He would never be humiliated ever again. It didn't matter if it was the Kayube. It didn't matter if it were the Hayugas, the Uchiyas. He would surpass them all. He would become a legend. Right there is where his story started. Right there. That single thought process that he took on right there. It was going to change everything. So yeah guys, it was basically as we left off. You guys can 
switch across the place and check it out for yourself. So what do you say be in this new episode? After the humiliating defeat by Itachi, as Naruto got home, as soon as he got home, Yoshino was there, looking at him disappointedly, with displeasure on her face, as she just kept on staring at him sternly. As Naruto looked back at her, he put on that smile on his face that he was known for, his eyes closed. He was kind of angry because after the frustrating humiliation, he didn't want to deal with this old hag right now. Obasan, he said. Yoshino looked him over for a few minutes. How pathetic. I heard you went to the academy and you embarrassed our clan. I don't even remember allowing you to go there in the first place. Worst of all, you had to embarrass our clan in front of the whole village. What do you have to say for yourself? Do you think that just because you're Minato's son, do you have to be naturally better than him? Do not fool yourself, you naive child. You're not even as good as your mother or father in Fujutsu. Your skills are just acceptable and you don't even know the proper Taijutsu's dance. And yet you have the guts to pick up a fight. I did not pick up a fight, Naruto more or less shouted. He wasn't in a good mood right now. He didn't want to be referred to as Minato. He was goddamn Naruto Uzumaki. Are you raising your voice on me, Naruto, she said in a low, dangerous tone. Wasn't it obvious? Naruto wanted to snap at her. But he calmed himself. Sorry. But it was clear that he did not mean it. He was merely saying it for the sake of it. But she was accusing him of picking fights at the academy when it was not even true. He was simply asked to do it by the teacher and he did. It ended with humiliation. But he still did. You're the ear of the Uzumaki. And you have responsibilities. But if they're too much for you and you can't meet proper expectations, you will be replaced with Karin. Do you understand, Naruto, she said, whether she meant it or not. God only knew. Naruto tilted his head to the side as his face returned back to normal. That look of indifference and a smile with his eyes closed. Crystal, he said. She no wonder if she was seeing things, but that brief second where he rose his voice towards her, she saw a look of coldness in his eyes. Something a brat like him should not have. She shook out the thought as her eyes playing tricks on her. She just said what she said to make him work hard. But it seems like he took her seriously. Well, that will make him work harder. Good, said Yoshino. If I hear another word of embarrassment, you will be forbidden to go to the academy until you can properly represent our clan. Do you understand? As Naruto gave a sudden nod, and Yoshino turned away slowly. As Naruto straightened himself, his smile washed away. As his eyes were blank, he was pissed. Never. His mind roared to him, never ever again. Would he be beaten like that? He would never ever be humiliated, ever again. His worth, his existence, it depended on. Naruto calmed his thoughts as he made his way. Within a couple of minutes, he reached the main house. As he searched for Aizumi until he found her, she was waiting for him. He smiled at the teenage girl. Aizumi-chan, he said. Naruto-sama, she said that smile. You're looking happy today. Do you enjoy your first day in the academy? He could have smiled and said it was miserable, but that would have probably scared her. After all, what kind of person smile after going through a miserable day? A psychopath. A masochist. So he dropped the smile and showed how displeased and bitter he was. Humiliating. How? She asked. A miserable story for another day, he said. Who is Itachi Uchiha? I assume a blink. How can you not know, Naruto sama She shook her head. Her ignorance baffled me sometimes. Itachi Uchiha is the heir of the Uchiha clan. He's known as the light of the Uchiha and he's a genius prodigy. He is the best. Naruto frowned at that. Ignorance was a truly terrible thing. But his motto had been, ignorance is bliss. Would he change it? Maybe. Maybe not. And I am the disgrace of the Uzumaki clan, said Naruto with misery. He was an embarrassment, the one who made the kids laugh. To how weak he was. No, you're not, Aizumi said. Quick to console him. Do you know that some kids start to question if I was truly Minuto's son? Hell, I'm sure that you're tell everyone by now. And tomorrow when I walk towards that goddamn place, they will look down towards me as some pathetic brat. Let's go there strip my father's shadow away from me. I won't have to look at it, but my own shadow, said Naruto. What really happened, Aizumi said. You will find out eventually, said Naruto. Tell me something, why do some girls look at me with red face while fidgeting? Aizumi blinked and laughed nervously. Why is your face red, Naruto asked. You're seeing things, Naruto Sama, she has to compose herself. Are you not hungry? Do you need anything? You're not gonna answer me, said Naruto. Oh well. It's nothing I won't know eventually. Besides, there's other important matters we must deal with. Where are my parents? Your father has yet to return. And last time I checked your mother. Has yet to return since leaving. Naruto nodded. Take me to the library. At this time? Why? I want to learn, said Naruto. I want to learn how to fight. And I want to strengthen myself. It's good that you want to take your training seriously. But you can do that tomorrow. You should go wash up, eat and rest. You had a long day, she said. Naruto smiled pleasantly. 
his eyes showing nothing but pure innocence. But the distance between them and took her right hand gently. Aizumi chan, please, we well, won't take long, and in return, I'll do things for you. Things only I can do, he said. Aizumi thought about it for a few seconds. Fine, she said, but only because you want to learn, and I want to see it so. You know that you're the best, right? said Naruto. Aizumi took it. Of course I am, she said. If I wasn't, I wouldn't have been selected to do this job. With that, she led Naruto out of the main house. They reached the largest building in the compound. Aizumi did some hand signs before telling him to enter. Why don't I get to do hand seal, said Naruto. I am not supposed to say, but there's a seal on you. That makes it easy for you to go through most barriers in the compound. That's good to know, said Naruto. As he stepped into the library, he paused. It, is this real the library, he said. Of course, our clan has history, dating back to centuries ago. We have recorded all the bloody battles between Senjus and Uchiha's, and since the latter were our brethren. We have some of their secrets in there as well, Aizumi said. Everything you need to know about all shinobi arts are in here. Clan things are in ground zero. There sure is other things to do, said Naruto. How do I multitask? Isn't there a jutsu that allow you to do that, he asked. As he looked around, Aizumi looked thoughtful before she pointed her head. Let's go to Tobirama Senju's selection. There should be something there if I'm not mistaken. Who is Toborama Senju? said Naruto. Naruto sama. Really? she said. As the red head simply laughed. I'm just messing with you, he said. Of course I know, he's faced on the Hokage's monument. Second to the first, he said. That's obvious enough, she said. There we are. I'm sure there's something here. You have searched here before, Naruto asked. Well, naturally, but I have too much work to do. And not to mention what you're about to learn requires a lot of chakra, which I don't have. Sounds like something I would like, said Naruto. Meanwhile, at the Uchiha compound, the head of the Uchiha compound looked at his son with a smile. How he was proud to have such a son. Perhaps witnessing what he witnessed was a blessing. He did not regret his choice one bit to take Itachi to the battlefield. His son had learned and he was growing up to be something he was very proud of. The whole clan was taking another direction because of the genius that he had birthed. He could only hope that young Sasuke followed the same path. I heard Minato's son came to the academy today, said Fukaku. Itachi nodded. Why did you say it like that? To phrase it right, he should have said that he heard that the red head had been registered in the academy. Instead, his father said like the Uzumaki just came here to visit. Fukaku smiled at that. His son was truly blessed. Seen in the finer details of things. He wasn't supposed to be at the academy, Fukaku said. Itachi grew curious. Naruto was only meant to be the son of the Uzumaki clan, said Fukaku. Don't know what made that old woman change her mind. Perhaps because of the situation, or maybe it's because she just can't stop him. Did he force his way? Ax. Itachi. He might have gone though telling anyone. What is your impression of him? asked Fukaku. He is weak, physically at least. I beat him today. More like humiliate him, Itachi said. To be honest, he expected something from the Fortikage son. A challenge. The match was over in seconds. He barely put in any effort. He glanced towards his father who looked like he was aware of that fact. Like he expected the result. Naruto has never fought before, Fukaku said. I assume that the only thing they've been focused on teaching him is Fuinjutsu. You have been training for a long time, but he hasn't fought in his life. Defeat was the only possible choice for him. I suspected as much. Why, Itachi said. How did he take the defeat? asked Fukaku. Hard to tell, but he was shocked. He doesn't seem to hold a grudge against me, though. Keep an eye on him, said Fukaku. He might be your competition to become Mukagi. You understand our clan position, right? Itachi simply nodded. I have been working with Minato to change things. We are making progress, but there is still some distrust. I can live with it. But you, you are our hope. If you continue this way, you will be love. You would be light. And that light will shine upon us. Itachi simply nodded. He was supposed to gain the trust of the villagers. And his father had plans for him to become the Hokage. He assumed, now that his father is working with Minato, the grudges has been settled. And there wasn't any act of forcefully taking back control at least he thought time skip the following day naruto sama as we said shaking the red head trying to wake him up they had slept in the library she shouldn't have allowed it to happen but she had fallen asleep while he was still trying to practice the jutsu that he was searching for he knew how to use his chakra so perhaps he fell asleep because of exhaustion hmm? said naruto as he slowly opened his eyes as he felt his body hurt it felt like he had gotten a beat in front of that scene that old woman Maybe it's because he used up his shocker, not to mention slept on the cold floor. Is it morning already, he said, as he couldn't tell the time while in the library. The place seemed to be cut off from the rest of the world. I assume not, you should hurry up and clean yourself at home before heading to the academy, she said. I'm not going today, said Naruto as he got up to his feet. I start training today. I wish the master jutsu first, so I can get some work done by the end of the day. I assume he took the scrolls from him. You're going to the academy. 
You will do this after the classes. Naruto tilted his head. Really? Yes, really, she said. Naruto wasn't going to get into an argument. He really hated arguments. So he nodded. I'm gonna head home. You should do the same. You don't want that old hag to see you in yesterday's clothes. I'm sure she will be pissed. A shiver ran down as in his spine. As she ran off with the scrolls in hand. As Naruto frowned. I thought you would drop them off. He shrugged and decided to go home and wash up. At the moment, he could only stabilize one of those clones, even after the hours of practicing. So another hour would do him some good, and he will send another clone to the attempt to do his work. An hour passed with him working. He then finally came out of the room as he went to get something to eat. His food was usually prepared, but there was nothing there. Since Aizumi had not yet get there, he found his mother there though, eating by herself. She looked rather tired, as she smiled at him when she saw him though. Good morning, Ruta, she said. It felt awkward to her just saying it. When was the last time that she said that to her son? Thinking about it, she hadn't been seen more in the house that often. Then again, she wasn't there own that much. But she felt wrong that she felt weird greeting her own son. Mother, said Naruto quietly. That hurt. He didn't respond to her like that. He was always live there on his beloved mother. What was wrong? Had she not been paying him enough attention? As a fleet, things had become rather hectic. Assuming the clan had responsibilities. Karen, and her life in general. Naruto did not make things better because he wasn't always available. Not that she blamed him for anything. He didn't even look at her. He was looking around for something to eat, possibly. Sit down, she said. I'll make something for you, she offered. Naruto hesitated for a moment before not then sit down. The minutes that follow were... Silence. The silence that seemed to be creeping up into your soul. There you go, said Kushan. She handed him his full plate. She knew that he did not hold back when it comes to food. Thank you, said Naruto as he started to eat. So, she said... She started with a soul, but she had nothing further to say. You look tired, said Naruto. I hardly slept last night. Karen has something. I don't know, but she... Hasn't been able to sleep recently. Can't sleep while she's still awake. When she's not crying, she's too energetic. And leaving her alone would be a risk. As Naruto simply nodded. As he finished his food. I hope she get well very soon, he said. As he smiled and walked away. There was so much more that Kushina wanted to say, but she couldn't. She didn't know how to say it. She wanted to ask him to be available for lunch so they could go to the park, along with Karen. She wanted to teach him some things that she hasn't been able to do months ago. She wanted to be with her son. As he walked away, she was certain she wouldn't see him for the rest of the day. Before he could completely disappear, she called. Naruto. He paused. Yes, mother, he said, without turning around to face her. She wanted him to have a good day, but all she ended up saying was, I I'm sorry. He merely nodded. As he simply walked away, as he reached the entrance, he found Aizumi there. Her hands fold across her chest. Done already? What are you still doing here? She asked. We have been talking a lot over the past few days. Said Naruto walking past her. What is it? Well, usually, you ignore me, Aizumi said. As she followed her head. Well, used to, said Naruto. But of course, if you say things I don't want to hear, I won't hear them, he said with a smile. Where are my scrolls? Forgot them at home. So, you're not going to the academy. And I can't drag you there, she said. My scrolls. I need to disappear from here. He smiled nervously. Can you also give me some money? I'll need to buy some lunch later on. Don't you have any, she said. Never need it. My parents always gave me everything I wanted. Tell me, she said as she paused for a few seconds, seeming to not know whether to say it or not. Until she just finally said it. Do you hate your parents? And she didn't want a negative response. Kushina was a wonderful person. She was one that gave her the job to look after her son for her. It may not look like it, but she still cared about him a lot. It will never be a day when that woman stopped caring about her children. Never. Why do you think so, Nurta asked. Well, the situation has not been really ideal for you, Aizumi said. I don't hate them. I could never. I'm disappointed though. I'm bitter. I hate the current situation. I'm immensely displeased, but I don't hate them, said Nurta quietly. Despite everything, they gave me everything before this. And I still depend on some lessons my mother gave me. However, I'm growing rather detached with all those memories. I assume it from, as she asked, what about your sister? I have thought about it, said Naruto. If it wasn't for her, none of this would be happening. I would still be laughing with my mother. But no, I don't hate her, he said. The rational part of me say that she's innocent. And it's not her fault. That may be true. But when was the last time you held her, Aizumi asked. He definitely had to learn Taijutsu. A few things to complement it. If you want to become Jonin as quickly as possible. He understood once he reached that point he would be adult. And he would step into the light. He could do things of his own and be recognized as Uzumaki Naruto. Not the Fortikage son. Starting today he would learn what he could. And never ever would be humiliated again. Aizumi frowned. He was ignoring her. She sighed. 
I'll take you to the scrolls and I'll give you the money, but I'm only lending it to you, she said. I'll be waiting, said Naruto. A few days later, Hokage's office, Minato just stopped everything that he was doing. Fukaku came up to him, knowing that whenever the man wanted to talk, it was something immensely serious. Minato tried to handle it with care because of Uchiha's offer. So much of Konoha that people didn't want to admit. Not to mention he was a Kagi. He was supposed to make everyone in the village live and everything run comfortably. Some people were paranoid and came to the Uchiha's. They said that the clan was too powerful and their actions were suspicious. But Minato was not worried. He had an understanding with the Uchiha. And they had an understanding with him as a Hokage, as someone who was on their side. You're early. We have things to discuss, said Fukaku. We always do, said Minato, as Fukaku sat down. But at least we're making progress. That is something to be happy about, said Minato with a small smile. Fukaku did not smile, he just nodded. I heard that your son was in the academy as well. He said nothing further. He just wanted to see his face and study the expression. He is. Surprise me, said Minato, as he was honest. He never spoke about being a shinobi. It made me not to feel pain in his heart and disappointment in himself. If he had been there, Naruto would have spoken to him about it before joining up. You spoken to him about it, Fukago asked. Minato shook his head. No. He's hardly home these days, so am I. But from what I hear, he's hardly at a compound. I assume you said that he's alright. Probably just sneaking out for some privacy. Perhaps, said Fukaku. I thought you would have someone watching over him. I would assume that he goes off the train. You see, on his first day, he was beaten. Humiliated to be the right word by my son. Minato frowned. It must have been hard on him. I don't give him time as I used to. And the fact that he's my son, the expectations must be really high on him. Fukaku nodded. If you have no problem, I could take him in. It will be good between the relationship between the Uzumakis and the Uchiha's. Minato raised the Arbor in this generous offer. Uchiha train a non Uchiha? That was something. Yes. I appreciate it. But let me talk to him first. And as a father, I want to be the one to help him. I know, it sounds selfish, but I understand, Fukaku said. He then changed the subject. Oh, see now, old fools are yapping about this and that. I thought, you and the third had handle things under control. That's all they can do, they have no power whatsoever. The third is my only advisor, and they no longer form the council. Your word, carry little meaning, said Minato. You wouldn't mind if I shut them up, would you, said Fukaku. As the man seemed rather annoyed by their bickering. What about Danzo? It's piss. Keep lurking around the shadows. And sniffed around my clan. I won't permit it for too long. Minato sighed. Danzo was a troublesome subject. That man never listened to anything. But the third insisted that they kept him because of the current situation that Konoha was finding himself in. Even though Danzo knew that he was only being tolerated at best, he still moved though. I will talk to him, said Minato. You can do anything you like to anyone trespassing in your space. That's acceptable. I can live with that, Fukaku says. He got to his feet. We should head to the chambers, my fellow. Clan members must be waiting for the meeting to start. As the both of them made their way, there was a meeting with the clan heads. Minato had destroyed the civilian council, as he didn't see how it made much sense. Those old people were seen now and they were making decisions that would lead to a rebellion soon enough. So he formed this group. He held the most power as a Hokage. Because he was a Hokage, he was only obligated to listen to their voice. But through and through, he had the most control. But because of better cooperation, he listed them. He took a seat at the center of a large table and greeted everyone with a small smile. I see that no one is present again to represent the Uzumaki, said Tasumi. It's quite disappointing. Kushina was supposed to be present, said Minato. But it seemed like she was held up by something. But it's okay since I'm here. I'll be their ears. It won't be necessary, said Yoshino as she walked inside. As she sat down. We have yet to fully agree what to do with the Kayubi, said Hayashi. As he kept his gaze on Yoshino, we already have this discussion. My position will not change. It will not change. Having another discussion will just be a waste of time, which I will not sit to entertain. You're being unreasonable, concerned what happened. We can't allow things to run like they were run before. We don't want another rampage happening, Hayashi said. Are you doubting our work, asked Yoshino. I'm not, but I don't want to hear it, she said. I have said it before. We will not trust the Kayubi in the hands of Danzo. It is currently sealed. And we can't extract it without causing one of the death of our clan's man, said Yoshino. Isn't the situation outside much more serious than this, she asked. Though he had his arguments, Hayashi frowned, as she was right. Fukaku nodded in agreement. I have to agree. The Kayubi pose no threat at all, but the Stone and Kumu are real threats, and if we're not careful, they will be invading us. Combined, they have forging jokes. I'm not sure even we can survive that, especially with Kumu numbers. There was silence as they all started to think deep. What have you been up to, Hokage-sama? Asked Shikaku. I spoke to the Daimyo so that he could speak to his counterparts. Both Raitage and Shikaki have been unresponsive to the request for a meeting. I think as long as we keep it tight and nothing major happens, they will retreat. How long though? It's becoming incredibly unsafe for our young ones to leave the village. 
entirely. They land the fire. Those other villages try to provoke us. As long as we control our shinobis, they won't do anything. We have two aces, said Shikaku. The Uchiyas and Uzumakis. With these two clans, they won't do anything stupid. Their bijus can be rendered ineffective. Even so, we must strengthen our village ties with other village. So that we have support just in case, said Choza. Minato not that that. I have been in contact with the fort, Kazakagi. They recently had a biju problem. And I dispatched a team of sealers to deal with it. Since then, we have been in contact on how to strengthen our ties. He understands our situation and I believe I can count on them. In case anything happened. What about Kiri? Still on lockdown, said Minato. We don't really know what is happening, but Jaria has been trying to get some information. The internal security is still sharp. We haven't had any incidents. As Hayashi Byakugan narrowed on Fukaku, I still insist the Byakugan should be more suited for the job on the inside. Those bloodthirsty brutes should be on the outside, he said. As Fukaku narrowed his eyes, I don't appreciate you calling my clan members that all seen Hayuga. As Minato Sai, as the two clan heads bicker once again. Really, Hayashi could be rather childish at times. Fukaku was not better either. No one wanted to be undone by the other. Minato cleared his throat, getting everyone attention. After debating, I come to a decision. The Uchiha clan will not be moved to the outskirts of the village. They will continue to stay as they are. I understand some of you your thoughts on the matter. But this is the best I can do for Konoha. Some of you may not like it, but please understand. If anything go wrong, I will take full responsibility to not make decision that brought danger to the village. And I will not start now. I hope you can trust my decision. Hayashi Frown, the Uchiyas, have much influence on what goes on in the village. They work with the Uzumakis, who are in power. The Uzumaki was rather fearsome. It was no wonder why their old home was destroyed. They had secret seals that could shut off both Byakugan and Sharingan. Not to mention they had seals all over the village. They can hold this village on the ransom any day. But of course, that could just be a paranoia talking. Well, you're welcome to take our jobs if you think you can do it by yourself. If I all remember correctly, you all accept the fact that each clan would offer a service to the village based on their strength. So far, we have not abused our power, nor have we made any unreasonable demands. We have worked to make sure that the village is safe. Or perhaps the reason you're complaining is because your so-called all-seeing eyes cannot see through our walls. Hayashi simply stared at the woman, he had nothing to say. As Fukaku spoke up, you people seem to forget that the Uchiyas is a founding clan. We founded this village along with the Senju. We betrayed our ancestor and sided with Hoshirama and the village. But ever since, we have got nothing but distrust from both you and the villagers. What have we done to be placed in this situation? There was silence until it was broken by Chicago. The Uchiyas has always been powerful. That is, without question, just the thought of the Sharingan alone make enemies think otherwise. Perhaps the strict action of the police force had made some of the villagers behave hatefully. But you can change that by acting a bit gentle as you carry out your duties. I have no complaints, said Tasumi. As long as they don't start poking into my clan. Let us all just agree that whatever happened in the clan compound isn't anyone else's business unless there is some proof of treachery, Yoshino said. Aren't you just saying that so we will stop questioning you? Because you and your clan has erupted a barrier around your compound that make it impossible for anyone to see what is going on inside, asked Hayashi. Must you always be difficult? You wouldn't need to do that to the villagers. Stop trying to sneak into our clan. We have already lost some of our clans, man, because of villagers, stupidity and anger. And we do not demand the culprits to be hanged because we want to keep the peace. If you really want to see inside the compound, you can make an appointment and you get a tour. Does that suit you? Hayashi, she asks. Time skip. Hokage's office. You have really relinquished your seats amongst the clan heads, said Minato to Harrison. I think I have grown too old to be involved. It is best let them do things on their own. Besides, I am still actively assisting you. Minato nodded. I think we just dodged a bullet, he said. The others agreed. Ah, Harrison. Not all of them, but they will understand eventually. Hayashi keeps on letting his anger for his rival get the better of him. But seeing that Shikaku was able to understand, there should be no worries. Harrison nodded. And Fukaku, he asks. Thankfully, I have earned his trust and he has earned mine. I think he's also trying to form a relationship between the Uchiha and Uzumaki that go beyond duties. But it won't happen now, Yoshino doesn't like the Uchiha's. Here's some chocolate that as he shook his head. Imagine if we had allowed them to be pushed over and backed against the corner. They have always been prideful people, and such measures that Donzo was trying to input would really hurt their pride. Minato nodded, knowing them, they would have revolted. To get what they deserve to be theirs. I feel they won't be satisfied unless one of them become Hokage. My thoughts as well. But let us see how things play out now. Here's and change the subject. How is Nurutokan anyway? He asks. Haven't seen him around in months. A deflated look came on Minato's face and he said it all. 
Harrison stood up and placed a hand on the man's shoulder. Oh, Minato, the man said as he started. Do not neglect your son. You will find out that what is lost. And trying to regain it is not easy, especially when it comes to family. Be there for him. Talk to him. Or you might regret it for the rest of your life. If he starts a purpose and try to work on it on his own, you might not get him back so easily. There's also some people that will try to get Naruto on their side. And they will help him when you aren't. I may be too late, he said sadly. He went to the academy without talking to me. And he goes out of his way to avoid me. It is not too late, Minato. But if Naruto doesn't want to, don't force things. Just keep eye on him and let him know. If there's anything he ever wants, you as his father would always be there for him. Time skip. Forest of death. Aizumi walked towards a water stream with a small bag in her right hand. As she looked on, she found Naruto floating in a meditative pose above the water. As his eyes were closed, his hands clasped together right at his chin. There were small orbs of water forming around him. There was another Naruto beside the stream. As he was sitting in a chair that was made from chakra chains, there were small balls of crimson flames, well, more like lava around him. Naruto called all of these chakra control elemental exercises. He couldn't do ninjutsu now. He simply said that he first needed to learn and control all the elements at his disposal to execute the ninjutsus perfectly. Learning ninjutsu would come after he was satisfied with his control over both wing and fire elements. Aizumi said nothing to the clones, knowing that Naruto never get involved in exercises as long as the clones could do it. As she passed a couple of trees, a small clearing that Naruto used as his training ground. He only had his training pants on. There was a bandage covering his right arm going down. He was standing on top of a chain that was tied to two trees. As he held onto a kunai, clones were hidden on their own as they sent kunais, rocks, everything towards him. He had to block and dodge everything without falling. Not to mention he was on top of a chain without anything balancing himself. There was no problem with being cut but falling down was punishable by doing 10 laps upside and down. Naruto-sama, Aizumi called out, getting ready at attention. You do know you don't have to call me, Naruto said, as he deflected a shuriken. While we are inside the barrier, this entire field is my field of vision. He jumped down as he walked towards her. I know, but I'm trying to keep things normal, she said. She placed a towel on the ground. She sat down and pulled out some food and placed on the towel. Breakfast is ready, she said. Thanks, said Naruto as he sat across from her. Should you be using that hand? It has yet to fully heal, she said. I'm not doing anything dangerous that would delay the healing, said Naruto as he dig into his food. He looked up. Did you get what I wanted? No, she said. All stats nor library doesn't fit your style of fighting and kinjutsu isn't the sort of thing you can learn on your own. Unless you create your own fighting style with a blade. Why don't you ask your mother? It was hard enough getting her to tell me about the chakra chains and Naruto. The frown on his face. He felt like he was emotionally blackmailing her. After everything she did for him, it left a bitter taste in his mouth. The only reason why she told him was because she thought that she could patch up some things and that they could talk. She even gave him a few pointers on the Uzumaki ability. He was grateful, but he didn't change much. I will have to get my clones to work harder to see the flaws of the style, said Naruto. Naruto got thousands of hours from his clones, so there was a lot of time for him to see his faults in his training. You even get me a sword that is tough enough to put up a fight against those chains, he asked. She shook her head, there's nothing, unless you're looking for a special sword. Why do you need a sword that is tough as your chains? A normal sword would be fine, depending on how you use it. Normal will not complement the strength of a chains. That will create an imbalance. As something I can't stand with. The chakra chains are created because of our special chakra. I fail in trying to use my chakra to create a sword that is strong as the chains. It seems to be an impossible task for me. I have come up with a way to get around it though. What she asks. When you leave here, go and find me the perfect blacksmith in the village. Go ask if it is possible to create a chakra conductor blade with the strongest material that they have and how much it will cost. Can you afford it? She said. Mother gave me a lot of money. Make sure that old hag doesn't find out. I'm close to telling her to shut her crap and go bury herself with the first guy's wife. That would end well for you, Aizumi said. All the more reason to push myself to my limits every day, said Naruto tiredly. My body doesn't do much work. The mind does all the work. For the past six months, I had to live more than ten life. I technically mean I have five years worth of training and five years worth of experience. Makes my mind twelve years old. And that has its consequences, Aizumi said. Which reminds me. We have to stock up more of your medicine for your headache. There's a bag under my bed in my room. The money is there. If I was a Jinjuliki or a full-blooded Uzumaki, I would have inherited the super healing you all possess. Oh well, this will just have to do. Aizumi nodded and got up. When are you going to talk to the people that is poking the barrier? When I feel like it, said Naruto, you assure me that not even Byakun can see through it. And unless they brutally attack it, which wouldn't break it, I will trust that the nuisances can keep turning and talking outside. Remember, ignorant is bliss. Aizumi sighed, she took her back. I will return with the result of my news. 
if it is good, you can go there and have the sword made yourself. As she went off, as Naruto was no longer listening, his mind was already focused. He made himself a promise all those months ago. He would never lose again, never be humiliated. That is why his life was completely focused on his training right now. As Aizumi got out of the barrier, she came to a stop as soon as she came out. There was a menace in front of her. The fact that this man was continuously pursuing Naruto did not please her at all. She was Naruto guardian and she was not going to allow him to be dragged in this man's world. She could not refute him face on. The man scared her. Well, not as much as the angry Naruto, but he still scared her nevertheless. What is Naruto doing in there that he has to hide it down so axe with his lackeys flanking his side? Training. Obviously, said Danzo, as he glared at the woman, we have not been able to enter this barrier. Would you mind telling us how to go through it? I can't. We have no problem in making you do it. There's a lot of dangerous animals in this forest that can make a person disappear. Outside the gate, there was a warning that said enter at your own risk. The man just threatened to kill her. She wanted to run back and tell Naruto, but she did not. She stood her ground. The man was indeed a menace. Everyone was indeed right about him. She had been indeed right not to tell Naruto about his visit to this site. Let me rephrase. Even if I tell you it will make a difference, the barrier is designed so only I and Naruto Sama can pass through it. I have thought about that possibility, Danzo said. I have spoken to Naruto twice and each time, he pretends not to hear me. I wonder if I held on to you for a moment, would he listen and do what I say? Aizumi tried to pull off a Naruto's smile, it was close but not perfect. You don't understand him, do you? Even if you hold me hostage, he won't listen to you. He will only listen to you when he feel like it. And I doubt he care about me that much and put himself in a losing option to save me. You won't know that until we try, said Danzo. Aizumi nodded, her heart beating fast. Even so, she held out her hands as she surrendered. Danzo went up to his agents, who apprehend her, as he told her to call Naruto. She did not object. He held her hand together and the barrier glowed twice. So you're the one that created this thing? You Uzumakis are truly blessed when it comes to Fujutsu. It doesn't seem that Naruto is blessed as the rest of you though. She did not respond. A minute later, Naruto stepped outside. Aizumi, you're still here, he said. He tilted his head to the right. Donzo-san, what can I do for you? Will you not reconsider my offer, said Donzo. I cannot respond to that because I have not heard about your offer. Please be free to tell me about it on a good day. I'm currently busy right now. He pointed at Aizumi. If she did something bad, take her to my mother or the Hokage. They're the one responsible for her. I can't do much. I'm just a kid. And if anyone asks, I didn't see anything. As he then turned to go into the barrier. One of Donzo's agents flashed in front of him though. Donzo-sama is not yet done. That girl will die if you don't cooperate. As Naruto looked up at the man, nothing but coldness in his eyes. I'll be sad, but I'll get over it, he said. Besides, if anything happened to her, you will all be hunted down. I am sure my mother wouldn't mind ripping all of you apart with her indestructible chakra chains. He turned towards Aizumi. You don't have to return anymore. Go home. I will send a clone to do what I requested. Gentlemen, he said, on your way back. Make sure the super Anvu that watched me is taking a nap. He then poofed away. Danzo Blink, that had been a clone. Earlier at the academy, Naruto strolled right through the academy. He was used to it now, he could probably walk through it with his eyes closed. This was his routine, come here and then leave. He would have a clone take it for him, but he would still get the experience when the clone dispelled. He tried to keep up the ear of the prestigious Uzumaki clan that the old hag said that he should do. It has been six months since he stepped in this place, determined to change himself into a light to overcome his father. When he said light, he doesn't mean like he'll be a good, kind, cherished person that would give kindness and purity to everyone. Because he didn't believe that such thing exists. If there was a God, that God didn't like him so much because he prayed hundreds of times, waiting for a damn signal, but he got nothing returned. So Naruto had looked up in the sky and he put on his beloved mask and give the God, if they exist or not, the middle finger. He could do everything with the army of his clones. Uzumaki and Naruto did not care much for the kindness of a god. Yo, Naruto, someone called from behind him. When you act like you ignore child, they were quick to hate. Being ignorant to these bunch of kids wasn't worth the trouble. He played the other way around, smile and talk to whoever talked to him. But of course, he never released their crap. Hello. He would have said the boy's name if he knew it. Seriously, he did not even know the teacher's name for the first two months. It was always sensei and he never bothered to ask because it was not necessary. Did you do your homework? The boy smiled, putting his hand over Naruto's shoulder. If he had saw the eyes that looked at him when he did so, he would have just left Naruto alone. No, why would I do that when I can just copy yours? That depends on whether I give it to you or not, or if I even written it, said Naruto. Ah, uh, come on now, Naruto, I thought we were friends. Naruto took the hand that was over his right shoulder like he was picking up trash. Maybe, but I didn't bother writing because it does not reflect on my year mark. But of course, if you try to force things out, I can always write the wrong answers for you. Well, you will have to go home using a different route, the boy said. Or I can simply call the on to watch over me. 
that Han Lee was a threat, Senruto, as he walked away from the boy, just because he was acting the good role, that doesn't mean he would take anyone's crap. As Naruto entered the class, he put on a charming smile. The girls, waiting for Uzumaki-sama, swirl upon seeing the killer smile. Hello ladies, he said, as they squeal. Once he passed them, his smile dropped. As Naruto realized the secret and didn't find girls, it was not to ignore them. Hell, if you even told them to go away, they would still come back. They had the same attitude as him. They will only hear what is good for them. So he just smiled at them and talked to them, melting their little hearts. So they would be too much satisfied to speak to him. Once he was inside, he turned off his ears and looked through the window. Donzo was right, the academy could not teach him anything. It was basically worthless. Well, in terms of training, but for his name, his reputation, it wasn't worthless. Kids were telling their parents how awesome and cool the Fort Kagesan was. It didn't please him that they still saw the fort in his work. The teacher was always like, as expected of the Fort Kagesan. Good morning, everyone, the sensei said. Did everyone write their math homework? Yes, sensei. It seems that the entire class said so. The man looked around. Is there anyone that did not? No one was raising their hand. As the man looked around before Naruto Uzumaki said, as Naruto wasn't paying attention again, he didn't bother to call his name once again. He looked towards the person closest, Takeda, will you hit Naruto for me? Takeda threw the punch, but Naruto caught it. As he then turned, what is wrong classmate San, he said, as he did not know the boy's name. You have your attention now, your highness sensei said, in a sarcastic tone. Really, he could understand it, the only person that rivaled Naruto in academics was Itachi. But the boy focus was always somewhere else. He only answered when he's asked. Sorry, I wasn't listening. Okay, now that I have everyone's attention, this is what is going to happen. Bring out your homework, books, and come to the door along with your books. Those who did their homework will go to the training ground with me, and those who did not will stay inside, doing their homework. It was joy, and some people shattered dreams when those words came out. That's not fear, Sensei. What are you talking about, the man said instantly. I asked if everyone did their homework, and all of you said yes. So why should you complain now, unless you were lying? Now, my beloved students, follow me, he said. Hey, Naruto, come on. You don't even care about this. Why don't you just give me the homework, and you stay here and take a nap or something? But Naruto did not hear the boy as he simply ignored him. Time skip. Training grounds. The people that call Naruto lame and disappointment thought that perhaps he lost because Itachi caught him off guard because Naruto had rise in the ranks so quickly. He outdid all of the other students in coolness and shrieking through him. And not to mention his grade skyrocketed. Naruto, Itachi, would you like to do an exhibition match before we begin? Those who are still lagging behind in the same taijutsu stance for the entire year. So they couldn't see what it's properly able to do when done correctly. Itachi looked at Naruto, he didn't have a problem with it. But Naruto always turned on the chance. It made Itachi curious, perhaps the loss was too embarrassing for him. And he didn't want to do it again. Itachi felt like there were some other reasons that he could not figure out. I'd rather not, said Naruto. You can select someone else beside. Itachi and I aren't the only one that mastered the style. That was true, but Naruto and Itachi were just slightly above everyone else in the academy. And he couldn't go the right head into it. And Itachi wasn't the person that would force someone into a fight. Well, that's right. But are you sure? This will show how far you have come. And if you beat Itachi. Come on, Naruto, show us what you got. This will prove who's number one. Yeah, the kids start to cheer. But the idea is appealing. I'm not that glory seeking. Looking for number one. I am fine with being second best at Naruto. Okay, the sensei says he looked towards Itachi, who just had a blank look on his face. Itachi Naruto, I am leaving you in charge of the class. Kunais are shocking throwing, unless you are being supervised. Those who are still lagging behind can practice now. I am going back to class to see if those that I left behind are doing their work. But if I return and find you goofing around, I'll make you write tests every day next week. As the man went away, Naruto went towards a tree trunk and sat down. A shadow then loomed over him as he looked up, slightly. Itachi-san, he said. Itachi just looked at him, not saying anything. Before he spoke, do you mind walking out of the academy with me? Today, he asked. Well, I don't mind, but I have plans today, said Naruto. Well, it was not his decision. The boss had to make that decision himself. But tomorrow will be fine. Tomorrow then, Itachi said. As he sat alone beside Naruto, what are Itachi-san? Come help here. The Uchiha side obviously didn't want to do it. But they are saying to leave them in charge. You're going to avoid your responsibilities again. Naruto pulled out his book. Yes. Itachi shook his head as he got up and walked away. Later that day, Uchiha compound. Itachi was at the back of this house, holding his little brother. As he loved his little brother, as he couldn't wait for him to grow, so he can teach him the things that his father taught him. Fukaku always taught him things that he wanted to be taught. If he said he wanted to learn a new ninjutsu or something, the man did not say yes or no. He just told him to follow him. And there was also the fact that he was the heir of the Uchiha clan. And not to mention a prodigy. He had his 
personality and his image of a pool. As a clan here, he didn't have to put much on small. Sasuke's shoulders. Yes. And that was better for his little brother. His father walked up to him. I thought you'd be at the training ground, Fukaku said after settling down. As that is what his son did most of the time. I wanted to spend some time with Sasuke, Itachi said. Smiling at his little brother. Fukaku nodded accepting the response. How was the academy today? Interesting. Said Itachi. I spoke to Naruto and asked him if we could take a walk. He said tomorrow will be fine. Took you long enough, Fukaku said. I wish that you would grow acquainted with him. Given his development and status, it will be good for our, our clan in a whole. With someone on the inside. Itachi looked towards his father. I thought everything was fine with Hokage. This is not letting us stay on this land and keep remaining in Konoha security. That is a step towards the right direction and it has suited many of us. As it stands, we are equally standing with more of the clans. But we still remain less loved by the villagers. The same could be said about those Maki. Well, they have it worse. But they don't seem to be too mindful of it. Surprising because they usually was a peaceful clan. Things can change in time, Itachi said. Becoming friends with Naruto would be difficult. I don't understand him. He's complicated. Fukaku chuckled lightly. Not really, Itachi. People can bond by different means, he said. Some shinobis bond through a clutch of swords. Some of them bond through the sheer ideals that they share with people. We know to an eye different people, but yet our ideals are similar. And we get along. It's because of understanding. Try to get to know him and you will find out. Father, why does Naruto not compete with me? He goes his way to avoid sparring with me, even though in a sensei. Approves of it. I know that he is not afraid to spar with me. And given his improvement, he could be a good match for me. Because he's using the same technique that you do. Shadow clone. That is one reason. And I believe that it's not his objective to be better than you. There's a bigger shadow that he wants to overtake than yours. And he doesn't engage in battles that he do not know he will win or not. That makes sense. I'll have to talk to him tomorrow. Perhaps we can become training partner. How frequently does he use Shadow Clones? Fukaku smiled. Every day. From morning till the evening. A few days ago he was taken to the hospital with severe burns on his right hand. He handled his case and he requested that his father does not know. Why? I don't know, said Fukaku. Well, he had an idea, but Itachi could work things out on his own. His mother was a Jinjuki of the Kaibu when carrying him. I think it might have some influence on him when she was carrying him because of flames. They were not normal flames that burned him. It's the only thing I know right now to know that he is training himself to his limits. And if you're not careful, he will surpass you. I will not let that happen, said Itachi. Good. When you become acquainted with Naruto, invite him over so I can talk to him. The reason he burned himself is because he doesn't have someone to supervise to help him with his training. Minota said that he wanted to speak to the right at first, but it's been months and Fukaku has been tired of waiting. An opportunity like this will never appear once again as well. I will return late. I have work to do at the military, police HQ. Itachi understood that his father was telling him to inform his mother if she wants to know where he is. But guys, it'd be in so right here. If you want the next part of what to do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification as I posted. Remember, share to all of your friends on your social media platform. And also, guys, stay in tune for the rest of the what is coming your way over on Anime King 2 and Anime King 3. Yes, you heard that correctly. I indeed have three channels. Anime King, Anime King 2, Anime King 3, which I post on every single day for you guys to enjoy. So go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become part of the Anime King family. And thank you for all of your help and support. And yeah, without further ado, what do you say begin this new episode? Start the intro.